Well, after negotiating with our neighbor for uh, almost a year, we finally came to an agreement, and we bought his shack. What a deal. And part of that agreement was uh, he could keep all his wood. So he basically hired a couple hands and tore the whole thing down himself. And then we had nothing but uh, a mucky lot to start with. You can see here after the shack was removed, uh, the ocean moved right in. Um, so we decided the first thing to do was to prep and get the retaining wall built. Our first goal was to uh, dig, dig some uh, footings. Our footings uh, depth was 120 centimeters. These were the main footings that would hold our retaining wall. We dug six major footings, uh, like I said, at a depth of 120 centimeters from the current ground level. Um, um, every footing was installed with two layers of rebar, as you see here on the street. Once we had the major column footings poured, it was time to do our, uh, our block wall footing, our retaining wall footing. The block wall itself was uh, is, is rebar reinforced, filled with concrete, with a, uh, a waterproofing compound made by Sahara uh, added to the concrete mix, which helps keep the water from permeating through the wall. The columns that you see spaced along the wall here are uh, are poured with four 12 millimeter rebar uh, tied together with what they call stiffeners or rings. Each vertical column was then additionally reinforced. Uh, with the use of what we call dead men. Uh, that they're basically just uh, two number 12 uh, rebars encased in concrete that uh, attach to the wall and then are anchored into a huge bell concrete anchor in the center of the lot which helps reduce outward pressure in the wall. Once the retaining wall is in place it was further reinforced again by pouring a, uh, a 12 by 12 inch steel reinforced beam across the entire length of the wall. While the wall was uh, drying or setting for a couple weeks I had some rickrack brought in which we used to place on the inside perimeter of the wall um, which helps reduce both hydrostatic pressure from from water and soil outward soil pressure on the wall. The next uh, project was to install a new septic tank. We have a septic tank for the house, but uh, for expansion purposes, who knows, I might build an apartment above a garage here, but uh, I will have an outside CR here, so I'm building a three compartment septic system um, just for additional usage, so we won't put too much strain on the, the uh, one septic tank that we do have. Uh, inside of about a week we had the tank built and I poured the lids myself and set them in place and uh, so the septic tank was ready to go. Now all I do is uh, get some fill dirt in here and uh, fill the lot in. Here you can see I have uh, or I had two different types of soil brought in. The one on the left is what they call 201. It's a composite of mostly uh, small gravel and larger rocks and clay. And the, uh, the dirt compound on the right is what they call common barrow. Common barrow. They pronounce it barrow. And it's just basically uh, soil that's laden with clay, dirt, sand. Uh, it packs good. The reason I need the 201 in the spot that I did is because that's where we intend to build a garage with a possible second story. So I need a good solid, solid foundation or base. With all the with all the dirt I brought in, I thought it was a good idea to have this guy come in with his little track hoe and uh, do some compaction and spread the dirt for me. Here you can see the high tide behind the house. After the dirt was leveled and compacted, uh, I let it sit for a couple months uh, just to let it settle a little bit more. Uh, some of you might be looking at this mango tree and wonder how it got there. There's a story behind it. And there's actually a video I did uh, as to how the magic mango tree appeared. I originally ordered uh, 50 bags of sand, which was mistakenly turned into a 150 bag order. Um, this was uh, this guy hand carried each one of these bags, 150 of them, uh, 
and dump them here. I had to let the bag, the sand sit here for a couple of weeks and become seasoned. What I mean by that is uh, a half a dozen rainfalls uh, is enough to, to rinse the sand out, to rinse the salt out of the sand sufficiently enough that we can use it for concrete. Here we get a load of uh, three quarter inch uh, hard gravel that we're going to use for our concrete mix and another load of hollow block. <laughs> okay, put you on YouTube. YouTube's okay? Yeah? No problem YouTube, huh? If there's one thing to be said about Filipinos, they love to be on, in the spotlight and on camera. Okay, now that I have some block in place and some gravel and just a little bit of sand left, it's time to build a wall. The bamboo that I ordered from the jungle finally arrived and now we can start building the fence. That's our barangay secretary and I've never seen her without a smile on her face. I have such happy workers. Uh, the reason for the fence, it's just a temporary fence uh, to keep the onlookers out, mostly children. Curious kids come in and want to see what's going on. Plus, once we get the fence up, then I can uh, knock a hole in the wall there on the left, uh, which will give us direct access from the patio to the lot. Now that the fence is almost up, uh, the next step will be to lay out some string lines and uh, basically lay out everything that we want to build on the inside. Here's a, a major post that's going in here. And the lines will, will be the guides for our footings for other block walls. Inside the courtyard here, I'm going to have a, uh, a tool shed, a uh, little shop studio for me with an attached uh, CR, a garage for the car so we can free up the space on the terrace, and then uh, we can work on our outdoor kitchen area. And since the fence was here, I thought we'd put it to good use and, and put our rebar bender tool, attach it to the fence, give us something to work on. Your rings are uh, 15 by 15, Deba. For the footing, 15 by 20. 15 by 20. 15 wide by 20 high. 15, 15, 15 by 20. There is no shortage of steel that goes into a, a project like this. And most of it's done uh, in accordance with uh, engineering specs. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's always better to be safe than sorry. Here these guys are going to set one of two columns inside the compound, uh, which would be our main supports. There is almost 80 centimeters of concrete already set in the, uh, at the footing for this post, and the post will be set into the wet concrete with about another 30 centimeters of concrete poured over the post. It will be strong. So we got the one post set, we got another footing dug, and we're going to move on to the back corner where the tool shed is going to be, and we'll dig some footings there. And uh, hopefully we get some concrete poured. We got some rain coming, so we're going to have to quit for now. And we'll pick this up maybe later next week after the rains are gone. But in any case, uh, it's, it'll be an ongoing project. We've come a long way, and we've got a ways to go. Thanks for watching. <laughs>